welcome to another Bronco Classic football game. This year we go back to 2002 to the Section 7-3A semifinals played at Public School Stadium in Duluth as the International Falls Broncos take on the number one seed that year, I believe, Proctor Rails. And uh, the teams had not seen each other during the year, but uh, they had a chance to see each other in the playoffs here, Stuart. That is correct, but we got to see Proctor practically every week because that was... Uh, well, during the period of the four games where the strike was on, teacher strike, that's the game I happened to go to for Proctor every night, uh, every Friday night. So what we'd do is practice on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then game day, of course, is Friday. Kids sometimes went to the games, and of course I went to the game all the time, and I always was interested to hear the announcers, radio announcers, when I was leaving and coming back. They are always talking about how we would not be a factor in the playoffs because we were sitting around doing nothing. Little do they know that all the time we had been practicing four days a week. And Jay Boyle here I'd have to really commend in that he did a great job of keeping the kids together. Only one kid uh, quit the team, but everyone else stayed. One went uh, moose hunting or something up in Canada but came back. But otherwise everybody showed up for practice every day. Well, Jay, Jay was always a real leader. And I'll tell you, he leads on the field today on this game. And he really does the job defensively in the front. Yes, he does. In fact, is we had to make some changes on this. When we first came back, we had to change our gate, which of course is our goal line defense. We had to go from our usual 6-5 to a seven-man front. Yeah. It's actually a seven-diamond seven where diamond. we stacked the linebacker behind. And they had a big team. In fact, is I think it's Hillas and Proctor's biggest team they've ever had. But they couldn't do one thing. They couldn't get Jay Boyle out of the middle. They had to double team him. When they did that, they had their choice. You can either block uh, Pressler or, or you can block Reggie Gilo. You're not going to get them both. Plus, every week I scouted, they did something. Whenever they were down by the goal line and they went to a backs up offense, when they were going to the right, the big fullback was the right uh, up back. When they went to the left, he was on the left side. So we pretty well knew where, which, side he was going which, to. which side the play was coming to. And that's going to be big in two goal line stands. Broncos will obviously start on defense here as they are going to be kicking off here and going across the front. Number 87, Josh Koshik. Number 73, Eric Moe. Number 78, Jay Boyle. Number 79, Jake Veter. And number 84, Bruce Conan. Your linebackers, number 44, Reggie Gilo. Number 34, Jake Pressler. And number 18, Floyd Brito. And then your secondary, number 24, Ross Johnson, number 25, Josh Pressler, and number 12, Brett Barr. Again, section semifinals here from Public School Stadium. A cool day, as I recall. As you see, everybody all bundled up and uh, kickoff not a good one to start the game, but the... Uh, Put the ball on the 35-yard line, we get this one underway. Is, uh, is, is, is Reggie a freshman? In this Reggie game? is a freshman. The <laughs> fact is, these are the first three freshmen to ever start when I was here. One was Ty Boyle, the other was Jordan well, Hedlund. Watch and this Reggie freshman Eagle. do the job right here. Broncos starting their 53, and uh, Bam. Coach mentioned Reggie uh, got him. Tough. Reggie in on the pile, Jay Boyle in on the pile, amongst others. And a good start for the Bronco defense. Now this time they'll go to Reggie's left, but uh, that doesn't work out for him either. The pro go ahead, sir. The linebacker on the other side is Floyd Burrito. Jake Pressler is the linebacker in the middle. And Reggie Gilo, nice fine play there. So third and long coming up for the Proctor Rails. Bronco's going to go to a four-man line here. Adjust as I see Eric Moe adjust to the defensive end position. That's when we went into a 4-4. Third and long here again for the Rails. Opening drive of this football game. An incomplete pass, and so I the Rails love that wish bone, but it doesn't pass. Up. <laughs> when you start floating out on the edge... Uh, on that wish one and you're going to throw the ball, you're wide open out there. I mean, it's pretty tough to do. Uh, you know, I, one of the things about this game that I noticed, it's Bronco line play that really dictates its success 
And there's there's three guys on there that went on to play college ball. Uh, uh, Eric Moe and, and Ty Boyle and Jay Boyle. All, all three of them played that is correct. college football. The fact point. is they were a big line, very good line, but the backs were very small. Mm -hmm. Josh Pressler about 130, Jake maybe is about 145, and Breeder was maybe about 150. Yeah. They were small backs. So the Broncos with their first offensive play here. Good field position to start the game on the 39-yard line. Yeah, I That's remember Floyd Greedo kind of came into camp, and we didn't we didn't know anything about him, but he was a real nice addition to your football team. Let's Outstanding one. Let's talk about the offensive line going across. Ross Johnson in the uh, tight end on the uh, bottom of the screen. Ty Boyle, the near side tackle. Jeff Raboyne, the near side guard. Jay Boyle was the center. And then Eric Moe and Jake Beter on the far side at the guard and the tackle. The tight end on the far side, Josh Koshik, the wing on the near side here. Uh, Josh Pressler, and you'll see some uh, Jordan Hedlund there as well. The backs, fullback, number 34, Jake Pressler. Number 18, Floyd Brito is the halfback. And Brett Barr was the quarterback for this football team as the first offensive play for the Broncos. Pressler finds a little crease along the near side and a good start for the Bronco offense. Broncos go to a little bit of a spread here. Good trap. Yeah, for 145 pounds, he was as tough as nails, and he was he was quick and uh, and fearless. <laughs> and could read the trap very, it, it, it very read well. Read the traps. Third and short here for the Broncos. Catch the rails here, moving around a little bit. Presser with the first down, get into the rails territory. Now, I think if you look at Jake Pressler in the top 20 rushers of all time, that. Jake Pressler's in there. He really was only a starter for one year, and he missed four games. Yeah. Not by injury. That was because of the strike at that time. Buck sweep. Here's Floyd Brito getting to the outside. Nearly enough for another Bronco first down. And it was enough for the first down. Jordan Hedlund, the wing on the near side, number 22 down here at the bottom of the screen. Presser finds a little ground behind Dieter and Eric Moe on the right-hand side. And Josh Koscik. Proctor loading the box here. Buck sweep for the Broncos and... Not much there. And so Ty Boyle is a freshman at this time, too. Correct. Yes. He is coming off the ball real well for a freshman. You must have yes. seen some promise there. He, he he looks awfully big on the tape. I don't know. Well, yeah, he was talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was. Waggle pass here and just out of the reach of Koscik. Good pressure there by the rails. Brings up a fourth down situation. And just outside the 35 yard line, coach decides to go for it. Watch this block by Barr. Yeah, very. That's a beauty on the old 26 crisscross. And Josh Pressler down inside the 10 yard line in the Broncos. And the Play Broncos. that again, Tim. And the Broncos come back. Uh, we'll have first down and goal here after this play. We'll run it back for you again. Watch uh, watch Pressler here, Josh. How fast he's going with his wheels. They never expected we'd be doing that on him. Well, good first possession here for the Broncos as they have first and goal. Couple receivers to the near side. The guy plays gonna pick up about three, get about a third of what the Broncos need to get into the end zone. So second and about seven, six and a half.
Proctor came into this game undefeated on the season, 9-0 and as I recall. That and is Broncos correct. Broncos were only 4-5-1 and and at this point. No, we hadn't lost yet. 5-0, and oh, excuse me. That is correct. My, my apologies on that. Yes. And out to uh, Pressler on the old zombie play. So third and yep. goal from the two-yard line. And it off to Pressler. And Jake is into the end zone. And the Broncos score on their opening possession and lead six to nothing. I don't know if Proctor had trailed all year. Ross Johnson with the extra point attempt. It is good, and the Broncos lead seven to nothing here. Just over five minutes into the first quarter. 34 degrees. I was going to say, it was a little nippy. Yes. If that got by you, 34 yeah. degrees, it was a little bit chilly and a little bit raw. The wind blowing that day. Again, I'm happy we were at Public School Stadium or at UMD rather than at Proctor's Field. Proctor with a little trickeration on the old. Return and get a pretty good field position here near the 40-yard line. This, After the kick by Ross Johnson. I don't, is this UMD's field? This yes. is PSS. No, this, this is, is public, public schools. Public schools, yeah. So the rails come again here with their wishbone. Good job there by the end, taking on a couple of blocks there, and Josh Koshik. Good game, though, for the Rails. Yeah, Reggie is coming up. He's a freshman. He's coming up and taking that, that lead block and, and holding his position. He's doing a heck of a job. Ordinarily, uh, you don't like putting freshmen in that situation, but... There's fullback here. He's about 230, 235. He's a big kid. Oh. Speaking of ends, there's Bruce Konad taking on the block Bruce, and then making right. the tackle to boot on that play. So it'll bring up a third and short situation, about two, two and a half yards here for the Rails. They were very frustrated when their fullback could not kick out our defensive ends. <laughs> and Bruce was no big guy. No. <laughs> no. 155 again, yeah. maybe. He's still stopping them. Yep. <laughs> Set up that block right there, and it looks like the rails will have just about enough for the first down. We'll see what the measurement. And it is a first down right at the midfield stripe. Second possession of the ball game for the rails. Broncos lead 7 0. Brett Barr coming up and making that tackle. Secondary was uh, Johnson, Josh, Josh Pressler, and Brett, Brett Barr. Brett, 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 and, and no Brett big Barr. guys in that, that nope. uh, group either. So good job again. Look at the end. And here come in all the other white jerseys. Josh Koshik and Bruce Konad just keep watching 87 and 84 of the ends, the job they're doing. Yeah, they were outstanding and piling up the play. And they have to go to the end because Jay will not let them up the gut. And it's, uh, maybe they'll try one. Broncos go to the 4-4 here. Pass in the flat. And incomplete. <coughs> so fourth and four for the rails. Stop it. Oh. 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 And a little excitement here for the Broncos as they Jake, get a little. Uh, Jake Chilson is always an emotional player. Well, Proctor was always good for that. Yes, they, uh, they were. They the old punt to uh, get next five extra yards when they needed it. Good job here by the Bronco defense. Short gain of about two yards on that play. 
George, this is about the time a little birdie came over and told me that somebody was stealing my signs during this game. Oh, really? Yeah. The Proctor Rails were waiting for me to make my defensive call so that they could make their offensive call. So one head coach, Stuart Nordquist, came over and says, they're stealing your signs, coach. So we had to, we had to, we had to work some things out. Start calling a couple signals, and you can see that they're moving the ball here, this possession. And so we had to make some changes, and we did, and the kids responded like they did uh, most of the times with, uh, with, with, with the Bronco teams. So first down for the rails, 28-yard line. Comes the sweep. The great end job. play was great. Josh Koschick, just outstanding play. Nobody uh, liked playing defensive end more than Josh Koschick. He, he enjoyed the position. We were talking about this at football practice the other day, how well your defensive ends have to play. If they play well, how good your defense can be. And uh, that, that it's just a key. Straight up the middle, the rails and a big run. And that first down near the 10 yard line. But the game kind of takes a different pulse from this point on. Uh, you know, here they are. They figure that, boy, they're getting ready to bang it in. And good, solid defense. Last play. So no there, place to go. Where you go? Look at Jay. He had, <laughs> he had three guys, a center and two guards, and they weren't, they weren't moving him. Look at the other guy's a little shaky after trying to hit him. Short gain for the rails, second and about nine from the 10 yard line. Throw the out behind the receiver, so now third and long for the rails. Of course, fourth down territory here. Almost, almost seemed like they tried to catch the Broncos maybe sleeping there a little bit, Stuart, on that play. Yes, they did. They thought they could get a quick one, but the pass was behind the receiver. Had success with that play a few plays ago, but uh, not this time. Jay Boyle again right in the middle of that play. So now fourth and about seven from the eight yard line. Six and a half. And they go for a field goal and it's wide. So 25 yard attempt here. And as Coach said, just a little bit wide. And the score remains 7 to nothing in favor of the Broncos late in the first quarter. Really late in the first quarter. Has now started the second quarter. Jake Pressler finding some room and his patented spin move that he liked to use as well. Gets the Broncos a first down. Well, he wasn't very tall, and if he could spin just that one little step, he was gone. Tough to find him behind all those big, tall linemen. It sure is. Bobbled snap there, and uh, Brett Barr does the right thing, picking it up and go where the ball was supposed to be going. So bring up a second and long situation here for the Falls. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, coach. Yeah, that was that was that was an interesting one there. Mm -hmm. So third in line now for the Falls. Ooh. Almost got that through there on the old trap play. So it brings up a fourth and five situation. Ross Johnson to do the punting here for the Broncos. Good snap, punt away. And the rails, good return. And into Bronco territory, they'll have their best field position of the ball game to start their Drive here, whoops, maybe not. 
penalties, so back to their own 40. That must have been an illegal block or something, that's yep. right? Yes, it was. So now the rails get out of their wishbone a little bit here. Send a receiver to the wide side of the field. Short gain on first down for the rails. Play action pass. Good pressure there by Josh Koscik and a completed pass nonetheless for a first down for the Rails. See on the clock, second quarter, about nine minutes remaining in it. Broncos leading seven to nothing. Yeah, that was really covered well. Yes, excellent coverage <laughs> on an option. Took it right to the right to the edge and finished it up. A little late hit there, as I recall, out of bounds. So they got 15 extra yards on us oh. on that one. And unfortunately, a first down here for the rails at the 30. Six big yards for the rails on first down there. Adjusting their linebackers a little bit. And then executed very well, shutting that play down for maybe no gain. A third and about three and a half, four yards here for the Rails. Unbalanced line here for the Rails. And Jay Boyle picks it up right away and shifts everyone over. Conat, uh, good job on the block, defeating the block, and then Brito right there to make the uh, well done tackle for no gain, maybe a little loss of a half a yard. So now fourth and four for the Rails. Yeah, that right defensive tackle is none other than Jake Veter, and uh, he cut a pretty good swath on the field for you. <laughs> He's yes, a big he boy. Did. Rails look to get to the outside, and no place to go, and the Broncos. Turn the rails over on downs. Good job there by the Bronco defense. Again, what we talked about earlier, if you want to play championship football, the first thing you have to do is play good defense. Yeah, can't do it any other way. Pressler up the middle, nice move there. First down for the Broncos. It's a thing of beauty when it works the way it's supposed to, isn't it, it the does. trap? I love yeah. when a plan goes right. Huh? <laughs> Quick rollout here by Barr. Just out of the reach of number 24, Ross Johnson. Again, Barr on the rollout. Unfortunately, takes a sack. Nobody open. He's a pretty heads-up quarterback, though. I mean, he could have launched that, and he didn't. Yes. Now third and long for the Falls. On the near sideline, looking for number 87, Josh Koshik with a big catch and a Bronco first down. That was a beautiful pass. It was a nice catch, too, and Josh still remembers it, I'm sure. <laughs> Trap play shut down there that time for the Broncos. Second and a full 10 yards coming up for the Broncos.
Same play. And just out of bounds. So now third and long for the Bronx. Press are finding the going tough on the right hand side. So now fourth and long for the Broncos. 45 yard field goal is not in play here for the Falls. Not this year. No, no. no. So let's see what Coach calls. Barr was looking for Koshik on the near side, but uh, sacked. And the Broncos turned over on downs. So back to back possessions for the two teams turned over on downs in the other team's territory. Pretty good run there for the rails. And of course, there was always a hill of trait, Stuart, that when he found the going tough, more, more guys going in motion. Or try to see how right. he can get you out of position. Which was always a great, good thing if you're the rails. That's what, what you needed to do, right? Yes. Second man through here, and the Broncos all over that. Good job again. Started with the end and the tackle on the far side, and Eric Moe and uh, Koshik the end, and then the linebackers with Reggie Gilo. So a third and long situation here. About five yards needed for the rails. A lot of people, because we missed four games during the year, didn't realize how good of a team this really was. You know, I really didn't realize until I watched this tape again and took a look, and, and I knew all the kids, but this was a very good football team. An interception here by Ross Johnson. Roscoe. The world famous Roscoe. And so the Broncos get the turnover. And very close to a possible pass interference right at the end of that play. If you're watching it on YouTube, you can rewind that. I know it was, uh, I think if I remember right, the rail coaches were looking for it. Of course, after an interception, why not? So first down for the Bronx. Brito. Puts the ball on the ground here. And the Broncos recover it. And Brito got back on top of his own fumble, so second and long here now for International Falls. Twenty-six crisscross. Another good nice block, block by the quarterback, block. and uh, the Broncos pick up about eight yards. So I know I was telling our scout team quarterback at practice the other day that he had to get out and be the lead blocker. He looked at me like, no, I'm not. Yeah, you got to. This is the way it's done. Ooh. Ooh. Big hit there as Pressler hit in the backfield. Yes, this is their big fullback, and he and uh, wasn't Pressler. It was actually Jordan Headland that took Headland. that shot. Thank you. So but he didn't it, fumble it. Was, jo on. was Jordan just a freshman too? Yes. Jordan was just a freshman. You've got four freshmen on this team? Three. Three. Ty, Ty Reggie, Boyle, and, Reggie and, and, and Jordan. And Jordan. Yep. Yeah. And all three would be outstanding. Oh, yeah. First and ten right at midfield for the Falls. Nice pass there by Brett Bard. Into the hands of Ross Johnson and the Bronco first down. Yes, going to his left. Roscoe could catch too. Yes, he could. He's a good football good, uh, player. Good football player. That was uh, one of those wedge quarterbacks, huh? Yeah. I just they wondered. ran it this season. I, I, I I'm shocked. I just, yeah. <laughs> So sec pick up about half of what they needed, second and five. Getting late in the second uh, quarter here, Broncos leading seven to nothing. Bar looking deep down the near side and picked off by the rails. And the flag coming in late as you see in the middle of the screen. The rails. <clears throat> Push back deep in their own territory after the turnover.
The one thing they could not do on us, except for maybe one play they got a break on, Jay Boyle did an outstanding job plugging up the middle. They could not move him out. That fullback could not go. He had no place to go. They only could use him as a lead. So penalty there on the rails, puts him right back. So we'll start again, first and ten here. You know, you take Boyle in the middle, tough, and then you take Eric Moe and you got Beater on the other side that you mentioned. Uh, that I, was a pretty good front with well, two good ends. Yeah. So you can see the clock counting down, and the Broncos will go into half, leading seven to nothing. And look at these guys. <laughs> they know they can beat this bunch. Yes, they do. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, people didn't realize because, of course, we didn't play that many games during the season, and some were away, but this was a heck of a football team, this yeah. whole two group. So the rails to kick it off here to start the second half. Something you always had to work on. They'd come with their onside kick right out of the huddle. Yeah, they did that more than once. And the rail's offside, so... We'll reload it and do it again. Jake Pressler, excuse me, Josh Pressler with the return here. Blitz coming and fumble, and the rails recovered on the first play of the second half, and right at the 25-yard line. But here's where good defense will keep you in the game. That's right, and this is about the third time that Proctor's been down that red zone, and they haven't touched it over yet. Halfback tries to go out tackle, and Reggie says uh, no, 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 and then the rest of the Bronco defense. Two defensive ends there. <laughs> Josh. Kornat and Josh. Koshik. Koshik. A five-yard loss of so second and 15 coming up. Broncos get the unbalance covered up. Not much going there either. Again, great defensive end play. Bruce yeah. Konat. I was amazed at how many tackles he picked up in this game. And and cut off the end. Never let them get outside. So third and long for the rails. Opening possession of the second half. Broncos again lead 7-0. Unbalanced line here for the rails. To the short side and they do get a little push there but uh, the Broncos will give them fourth and about nine yards to go. Oh, long field goal attempt here. 41 yards. You know, yeah. tough snap. And the pass knocked down, and the Broncos do hold. Yeah, Kostya yeah, got his hit that yep. one too. Kostya got his hand on it. He's having a career. And the kicker did have the leg for 41 yards from Proctor. He was uh, he was banging them home from about 45 to 50 during warmups. Broncos get three or four on first down. Comes the crisscross. Good read by Josh Presser on the block. Whoa. Turns it up inside. And the Broncos get a first down. Jeff Raboyne out there on the lead with a good kick out block. Ty Boyle coming through. Or excuse me, that's uh, Ross Johnson coming through. And uh, good job by the Broncos getting the first down. Jake Presser puts a foot in the ground. Good cut. Picks up about eight or nine for the falls. It's interesting how that game could have changed. You fumble on that Whoa. first play, and then you hold them, and now you get a couple big plays, and it's a different ball game. 
But you know that hold on the first series, that really kind of sets the stage in, and the first series in the second half as well. And that's when these that's when the defense really put it to them. It's the defense that won this game, no doubt about it. Jake Pressler finds the going tough. So third and short. And the quarterback sneak into rail territory. Mm -hmm. Very imaginative now. play. Yeah, it is. It's just <laughs> Imaginative. I like that word. I, that's that's good. It's the first one we learned at UMD too. Third quarter, Broncos leading seven nothing. Comes the crisscross again. Blockers out in front. Big play again. Nice spin move here by Pressler. This is Josh. This is an incredible spot. This is really something. I cannot believe that the officials could get talked into this. He had forward progress up here for a first you down, of which they line. mark it. Oh, look at that. Now watch this. Hilla comes out with one of the great BS stories of all time, saying he was trying, so therefore what what ended up, so they moved the ball back. Oh, that's not the way the rules Wow. Reads. It was. I told him during a clinic one time, well, I can't repeat what I told him about this play. This this was just an absolute terrible call. On Is this worse than the Greenway spot? Yeah. This worse. is worse than the Greenway spot in the, the 2000 regular the season. Worst. And we're, wow. Yeah, so Broncos amazing. don't have a first down. No. They, so just, that reloads the play here took for the five yards off you. Yeah. So second and short coming up here for the Falls. It doesn't sound like it's something Dave Hiller would have done. I don't And Jake leads forward, grinds through enough for a first down. Greedo, man, just could have made that an interesting race to the corner if he could have broke through that tackle, but it's a two-yard game. It's something how you can remember certain plays like that penalty <laughs> there when they move the ball back. And, and, and you'll never forget it either. Nope. Comes the crisscross again. God. Jeff Rabboy did a really nice job yes. on that play. I'll tell you, all day he did a good job. I'm kind of amazed you got four running backs going all day and the, and the greatest running back in Bronco history sitting on the bench. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> you are right, George. Third and five. And a quarterback sneak. Sometimes people ask me about that. They said uh, Reggie didn't start. When he was uh, a freshman as a running back, I said, no. There was a guy ahead of him by the name of Jake Pressler. Yeah. Could, couldn't, couldn't beat him out. I mean, he was good, but he couldn't beat him out. No. Nope. Uh, it's just, it's funny when you take a look at these lists at just who does what. Fourth and short for the Falls. Big play here in this game. Quarterback sneak. Oh, it's close, folks. Both teams saying it's not enough or it is enough. Well, if it was up to Jake Veter, <laughs> and the Broncos just enough to move the sticks and continue this drive. Good hard running by Jake Pressler. Picks up about four. You know, Jake Pressler for being a fullback, small fullback. Really packed a lot of power. Well, he did. He was a very powerful kid. And Josh was, too. I, yep. I felt mostly bad about the wrestling program when it went down. I was down just going to say, were, they do were, I dare bring it up? <laughs> no, and they came, they came from Iowa. I mean, that's what they were there for. That's what they were born for. Yeah. But they were pretty good basketball players, too. Yes. They're in short. There it is, the crisscross again. Look at that nice oh. cut. Good vision there by Josh to get a Bronco first down. You must have run that six, seven times this game. Oh, yes, quite a few times. When it works, you know. It works. We, it believe, works. we believe in going back to it. Yeah. First and ten from the 14-yard line here for the Falls. No gain for Brito. Jeez. 
So close. On the trap play. Bring up about third and about six and a half here now for the Broncos. Definitely in four down territory. Barr looking into the flats, wide open. Ross Johnson, ah, maybe not wide open, but well thrown ball. Back, right yeah, that was. That is called Sam Delay. And that is six points. So the Broncos now lead it 13 to nothing here in the third quarter. Johnson after scoring the touchdown for the extra point kick. Yeah, I remember the Sam series. It was very effective. Well, you can see with just over a minute remaining, the Broncos up by two scores. Thirty-two, Dean Kukon, you can see out there. Trying to see who else. Fifteen there, Tyler Koschik. Far side of the field, Travis Solman, number four on the far side of the field. And Johnson, the kickoff. We almost had this one. Oh. There's a coach on the sideline. Yeah, yes. I don't know why he's, he he's thought so, too. so exasperated. He doesn't, doesn't need a megaphone. I could hear him <laughs> from 18 years ago. Holy cow. How did we miss that? Oh, yeah. A little unbalanced line here for the rails. Good first play for Proctor. Get about five. And unbalanced. And Coach Hill, it looks like he may have found something. Well, if he would have had this drive going the first quarter, then he probably would have. But that uh, that wishbone does not, you don't come from behind no. very easy with that. You're right, you said that before, George. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. First and 10 here for Proctor. A lot better there, and we have Coach Kosh. Josh, Josh is doing a very fine job. <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the Broncos recover the fumble there on the bottom of the pile. Jake Veter coming up with yep. it. That was a big, big fumble recovery. So the Broncos, end of the third quarter coming up here and leading 14 to nothing. Now have possession of the ball. Picks up about five. And the end of the third quarter, as you hear the horn in the background. And the Broncos 12 minutes away from advancing to the section finals. Wasn't much there. Presser no. found a crease, though. If there was a pencil hole, <laughs> he could it, find it. He could find it. So third and short for the Broncos. Rails, six-man line, three linebackers up tight. Broncos hit the outside, and Breed will find some ground. And enough for a first down. Tough going for Jake up the middle that time. But the clock is rolling. It and is. That's important. Thing. Up 14 to nothing. And the Rails had seen that play. They reacted well. And loss here for Burrito. Now third and long. You remember this one, Tim? I do remember this play call. And just before the, uh, just before that play, uh, we'll pause it here for a second because, well, coach was coach was calling a play that was going to be thrown to the flats, and it was a zombie play as we called it, and it would have worked. But then I started thinking, you know, we're head 14-0. Don't beat yourself. Make them beat you. So we called timeout, 
and went to a different play. And of course, the fear was throwing it in the flat could be an interception, and there's nobody there to cover That's it. That's correct. And all of a sudden, you give up the touchdown, and so why, why, why take a risk hey, like and that? And we have all seen it happen. Oh, well, third and thirteen here for the Broncos. Bar on the run, and still the interception, but no return. No. And just as good as a punt. Yes, it is. Up fourteen, nothing. Rails go again to the unbalanced to their left-hand side, to the right-hand side of the screen. You can see they've got an extra lineman to that side of the center. Getting a little push back there on the edge. Second down. Again, unbalanced now to the near side of the screen, to the left-hand side of the screen. And going to that weak side. Just getting to the outside and getting enough for a rail first down. At the 27 yard line. Yeah, Josh took him out and Roscoe finished him up. I guess it was Jake that. Rails to the air. One of the few times in the game. And whoo, nice catch by their end. And number 44. <laughs> In on the tackle. Uh, be Reggie. Yes. Uh, Said something? We, we blew a coverage right there. So inside the 15-yard line now are the rails. In business, looking to cut the Bronco lead in half, possibly, or more. And it certainly looks like things are going to happen right here, because now it's second and one. From about the three yard line, two and a half yard line. So second and one. Backs up as uh, Stewart talked about. And very, very close here. They'll get a first down here and then they'll have essentially five shots from inside the one yard line and they can't get the ball in. And they had an overpowering, huge offensive line. They did. And, and and look at the bottom of the pile is Jay Boyle time and yeah. time again. He's the one that cuts down those blockers. So first down right here, right, Stuart? If I'm counting correctly, or is this going to be second down? Because we can't see I, the yeah, down marker. Right. I think it's first down. First down right here. And here comes Jake Pressler. And number see where 36 was? See? Yeah. That was the key. Conat right there uh, on the tackle, so... Second and goal from the one yard line. A little bit of an option here. Kashik runs it down from behind along with Gilo and others and not into the end zone. Up the middle, referee says no, and the Broncos hold the year one off. That was fourth down there, and the Broncos hold. Reggie, you'll see, is laying there. He tackled them, and he got the helmet right in the gut. Okay. Now we have to get out of here. We have to get out of the end zone. Quarterback sneak. Not much on first down there. You can see the linemen still standing in the end zone. Got their feet yes. in the end zone. That's how close they are. If it works, do it again. <laughs> Jay Pressler, not much there. So now third down from about the one yard line, one and a half yard line. There's still plenty of time left. Yes, there is. And we call the timeout. And we call a play. Yeah, here's a timeout. We set up a play where we're going to go to the outside because we don't think they'll expect us to go to the outside. Jake Pressler, look at the nice block out there. Brito got on that uh, man, yep. and enough for a first down, and that's uh, that was a huge play. Floyd will give you whatever he had, 
I at all times. Telling them in the huddle, everybody has to do their job on this play. We've got to get out of this hole. So first down for the Falls. Jake Pressler off tackle, few yards. Second and seven for the Broncos. Jake finds a crease for about four. Third and about a yard and a half, two yards here for the Falls. Fourth quarter here, Broncos leading 14 to nothing. After the goal line stand, I forgot which side to line up on the ball, my goodness. Excuse me, Jake. Oh. I just think we had That a, was a classic run. We were into the our end zone, or, and we now have come out to almost the midfield. Yeah. So first down for the Broncos at their own 42 yard line. Ooh, good, good, good hit there, good pop. Short gain for Jake, and the Rails will use a timeout. You can see a minute 50 remaining. The Broncos are two scores ahead at 14 to nothing. <laughs> Coaches looking at each other like, oh, <laughs> like, how oh, did that happen? Everybody was getting a little tight here. Third and long out for the Broncos. Again, trying to work the clock here. Jake goes wide and gets taken down for another loss. And now the punting situation here for the Falls. How they fell for this is beyond me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned that we got away with the quick kick here, Stuart, but we did. Nobody back to pick it up. And, Jake and look at the coverage on this. Look at the punt. And then the white jerseys come down. And uh, Ty Boyle, one of the first ones there, the left tackle. Not sure how he got there so quick, but he did. He did. Well, the ball was away. You could leave. The ball got away. It's a quick kick. So The kid showed promise early. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. The fact is, during the period of the strike when we were practicing, he was screwing up our play so bad, we moved him over on offense to start. Rails, down two scores, looking to come up with something here. And uh, Raj Johnson says that's enough of that, and smartly goes out of bounds, and then gets the flag. Right. Add, add the 15. Roscoe on. could do that. <laughs> yeah, hitting out of bounds. And now all the Broncos have to do is come up and Put a knee to it. And they'll advance on to the section final. We could have scored down here, but we took a knee instead. <laughs> it was the right thing to it do. It was the coach. right thing to it do. It was the right thing to do. They were they weren't defending for it. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. You remember that yes, one? Yes, I do. <laughs> no sense taking any chances. Take the knee and take the win. And the Broncos win by a final score of 14 to nothing over the number one seed Proctor Rails. And uh, coach, it was, uh, I have to say, one of the uh, maybe the most memorable wins yes, that I've had in my 25 plus years here in International Falls. Yes, it was. A big goal line stand, more than one actually. We forced them into a field goal one other time. And uh, to this day, I'll always say this about this team of 02. They were a lot better than people realized because I guess nobody really saw them that much. And I think that's what surprised Proctor too, how good we were. And uh, we had an outstanding line. Uh, well, you know, and you, and you only played five games. Uh, oftentimes your offensive line doesn't develop till later in the season. And they really didn't have time, that much time to mature. But it didn't show today. No, they were a very, very good team. I've always wondered if they got to play the whole season had they would have either won the conference or won the section. I really felt they were that good of a team. All well, the next people week, didn't know about them. The next week, the Broncos would take on Hermantown right back out at PSS for the uh, section championship and lo would lose by a final score of 22 to 17. And like you said, Stuart, how close were they? Uh, 
that 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 game was decided by a couple of plays there. It could have gone it could have gone either way. Yes, it sure could have. Again, uh, I thought uh, we got um, a couple of calls. A, a couple of calls <laughs> that should have been different. One involved Josh Pester where he made a real long run, and uh, they called it back on a. Uh, I'll call it a phantom hold. In other words, it was a good the camera could even catch it. Yeah, so, yeah, I know the play you're talking yeah. about. I, it would be one of the plays that's will stick know, in my mind. You know, coaches can put it that way. The call should have been different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You George. know, I, I, I mean, I've been on the field and and listened to coaches tell referees how different their calls should be. But uh, yeah, that's that's a great way of putting it. The Broncos. Uh, in this game, 219 yards rushing against a team that I don't think people thought would give up 200 plus yards rushing, 64 yards passing for 283 yards. The Rails were held to 106 yards rushing, 3.1 yards per carry. They didn't get uh, two passes completed for 72 yards. You probably remember the big one down the middle right before that goal line stand. Jake Pressler, 22 carries, 106 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Seven carries for 68 yards, almost all of that uh, on crisscrosses for Josh Pressler. Averaged 9.7 yards per carry that game. Floyd Brito had 12 carries for 35 yards. Brett Barr, seven carries for 12 yards, of course, on the quarterback sneaks and the couple sacks he had to take. And Jordan Hedlund had the one loss on the uh, one crisscross in that uh, game. And uh, 64 yards on three completed passes, 25 to Ross Johnson uh, on two passes, one, uh, one for the touchdown there that sealed it. And uh, that one long one to Josh Koshik down Very the near sideline. Yes. That was a big pass for 39 yards. And oh. the Broncos take down the 9-0 and uh, Proctor Rails in this section semifinal game. And, uh, George, your final thoughts well, this, uh, on this, this game? This really was a family affair. When I go through the list, there's two bars. There's two Koshiks, although they weren't brothers. Uh, there were um, two Presslers, two Peralts, two Veters, two Boyles. And, uh, and Eric Bowen and Eric Moe. They're not related, but it was <laughs> right. close. Yeah. Uh, and I, I want to point out one other thing on here. There were some people on here um, that were very, uh, very special people. I believe, it was, uh, I believe it was Josh Pressler who went on to become a Navy SEAL and, and trained very hard. Uh, Eric Bowe um, uh, went and, and, and served four years in the Marines. And Ty Boyle still is. So no, that we, we, we had some real... We had we we had some real soldiers. And Brito and yeah, Floyd Brito in Iraq. He did. He was, he was in the Battle of Fallujah. In fact, yeah. he was wounded in Fallujah. So um, yeah, there was uh, there were there were a lot of Marines and a lot of a lot of really good people. And yeah, and, and I know you probably bring this up, but you know you have Mike Jensen and Bjorn Johnson as assistant coaches. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that's that's a, a, a nice little affair there. It was. You think of the mental toughness of that team. We fumbled right away in the second uh, half. We held, uh, we stopped him down by the goal line, we had to get out of there. Uh, we got out of there and we actually took the ball back over across the 50 before we had to give it up. This team was really a mentally tough group and I think that showed up every day. Even though we didn't have uh, uh, practice at the school, we practiced at the college. Uh, only one person ever, only one person quit the team. Everybody else stayed with the team. They showed up every doggone day. and. Uh, we practiced just like we were going to play that team. We had cards. We did everything just like we were playing that team because we didn't know when the strike was going to end. And eventually, it finally did end right on the very last game of the season. We played Crosby Ironton. We came out. We were sky high, and we just obliterated them. We beat them, I think, something like 62 to nothing. We just took yeah. them apart. Yeah. This was a very good football team that is probably the most forgotten team because we didn't play four games during the regular season. Well, you had a nice combination of, of, of youth and, 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 uh, and veterans and seniors and a very good uh, team speed, Stuart. Yes. Talk about one thing about this game that you remember, Stuart. Uh, what, what, what is it? What, what's the one thing when somebody says Proctor 2002? What do you think of? First thing I think of is the mental toughness of the team and the great goal line stand. It wasn't just four downs that we held them. We held them for five, actually. They just got a first down, and we really gave them four or five shots inside the one-yard line, and they could not score. In fact, is I don't know if they gained a yard. And I think that just, when I talked to Hilla at a clinic later, he was uh, very, very surprised that we were able to hold them. I don't think anybody has done that all year. No, they hadn't. Yeah. 
Well, I'll tell you that, folks, the thing that I remember about this game didn't happen during the game. It happened after the game was the thing that I remember. And uh, when we pulled out away with the bus, uh, it started kind of softly in the back. And then it got really loud. And, and the, kids, the kids weren't really allowed to show a lot of motion on, on bus trips. It wasn't, it wasn't something that uh, on the way down, it was very quiet. It was very subdued. And uh, the Bronco teams won many, many games on the road, and it was usually pretty contained, self-contained, pretty controlled on the bus. Uh, but these bro boys broke out into uh, Kokomo by the Beach Boys, and as we <laughs> rolled past McDonald's and up the freeway, uh, Kokomo was singing, and we got to go through Proctor on the way home, and it was uh, it was something no, that no, I'll no, never forget. They started that in the ninth grade. Yeah. Well, it never, but they had never done it on the bus up to them. That was something that we didn't do, and uh, I, I will give Stuart credit, as most of you people who are watching this, uh, watching these games, uh, you got to to be right up close and personal on how he felt about signs of uh, outward uh, whatever. Uh, once things had kind of settled down, and and you let the boys go, and I think that was a that was a big thing. That really. That really kind of was 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 a good turning point. Well, I am human too. Well, yes. <laughs> no, my well, wife brought it up today. Uh, Justin Jefferson caught this pass in the end zone and tripped the light fantastic yeah, was... all over the end zone. And and Sue said, "How would your coaches have <laughs> responded to that?" And I said, "Well, first off, they wouldn't have had a clue what I was doing that I was crazy and, and send you away." I says, "But." Stewart wouldn't have liked it very much either. <laughs> no, no, but this was this was a big win and, yes, uh, and and celebrated appropriately. And again, this team would go on and unfortunately lose the following week, uh, twenty-two seventeen to Hermantown. But uh, a, a great uh, great game here uh, from the two thousand two section semifinals uh, down at PSS. Fun guys, this fun. was fun. Yes, it was. It was uh, it was good to revisit this game. It uh, brings back a lot of great memories, particularly how tough we were mentally, stopping at one time after we fumbled early in the second half, and then of course the great goal line stand. Well that's going to wrap it up for uh, tonight's game here. Again, the 2002 section semifinals from PSS Stadium for Stuart Nordquist for George Frake. I'm Tim Ringhofer. Keep watching Bronco Classic Football right here on KCC-TV.